Okay, thank you very much, Zhang, and thank you, Evelyn, and thank you, Lee, those excellent presentations. And I would like to just bring up to show you the. Uh, please provide your feedback if you finish the webinar because we need your feedback and your opinion on how so we can improve the further uh, webinars. What if a producer or landowner is approached and does not have suitable answers to questions for some reason? Is the data thrown out or is it used even if it's not accurate? We examine each of the surveys in their entirety. Um, and so we look to see if there's too much of the critical information is not um, answered or if it is, or if they answer, I don't know to too much of it, um, we are actually forced to throw that point out. Um, we do look at, I mean, as far as accuracy, if they do report answers, there's not really a way that we can check the accuracy. Um, we do look at, you know, if it's, seems like it's really out of bounds, uh, we might do a little research and see if we can figure out, you know, maybe, maybe we can figure out what they actually meant. Um, we have had cases where, um, like as far as putting fertilizer in through an irrigation system, they report, you know, some huge amount. Well, it was actually um, what went into like their thousand gallon tank of water, uh, but that was diluted and spread out over you know, all the acres. So. We kind of have to use some common sense on some of it, uh, but we, we really try to model what they report because that's, you know, we want to try to report um, what the farmers are saying. I don't know, Lee, do you have anything to um, add to that? Yeah, I think you covered that fairly well. You know, we do have to look at each of those surveys and, and look for some accuracy and discrepancies in there, uh, since this is all written down uh, by hand, a lot of times the data entry is, is, is not exactly correct. So we have to look at that very closely. You know, sometimes they may have actually put pounds and they meant to check tons. Uh, but, you know, when we look at other parts of the survey, we can see where that mistake is there. But in the end, if we really aren't sure, uh, we, we, we just toss it. So uh, we start out uh, with about 50,000 points selected and by the time it goes through the process for quality assurance, uh, tossing out folks that uh, you know were asked twice, or there's several other reasons why we have to throw a point out, uh, but then we get down to the quality of the survey itself, and we end up with around 18,000. So, uh, which is which is good, but that's about what we'll get with the, with the survey is 18,000 points. So we're, we're we try to be fairly rigorous on on letting a point go through. Uh, and still allow us to, to say things uh, fairly meaningful about uh, conservation trends. I see a question for Dr. Uh, Khan. Methane emissions are generally negative in most agricultural soils except rice paddies. So how is biochar reducing methane emissions? Negative means it's a methane sink. Enzong, could you please Yes. Yes, uh, yeah, very interesting comment. Uh, so actually, um, this is our lab scale test, very early stage of test, but when, when we apply uh, dairy manure to the soil, essentially the methane and CO2 is quite an increase from soil alone. So our target is to actually reduce methane from the dairy manure applied field when manure really increase, I mean, convert into uh, greenhouse gas emission. So I think uh, you can see the, from my data, soil itself generate very negligible, very small methane, but once we add the manure to the soil, the methane and CO2 is quite an increase. But when we add biochar to the manure applied to fill, essentially we see quite a reduction of methane uh, from, the, uh, from the soil sample. 